Right, so with all being about Bryson DeChambeau's 417-yard carry in the recent Ryder Cup, I thought it was about time I had to go this long drive effort myself, and we managed to get all of the shaft from Callaway, 47 inches long, like I said, 40 grams this particular weight that I'm using. I'm using the Callaway Epic Max LS, yeah, driver head. And I want to see just how much difference it makes. Is this the future of the game? Is even people with the kind of swing speeds that I've got, are they able to cope with this long drive? And how much difference is it going to make to my performance? I've absolutely no idea, but what I can tell you is these next few shots you hit, and you see me hit out that outside in the bay, I've opened my eyes a little bit. The first thing I've had to do is uh, come outside and make sure that we stop the traffic on Seedon Road because with this long drive shaft, in hand, I've got a funny feeling. I might just carry the fence. Right, come on, give it a Bryson. That's a heck of a start. I am a bit worried about that fence. Oh, we didn't quite reach there, but it was a decent start to what is going to be a real interesting video for me. 47 inch long driver shaft. It is in only 40 grams in terms of weight and a regular shaft because i've tried others in kind of 50 gram stiff and i cannot move the thing at all it's like swinging an absolute sledgehammer but this thing works to a degree i'm going to find out how much difference it makes to my club head speed my ball speed and ultimately am i going to be the next long drive champion we all know the answer to that bit but how much difference will it make in terms of my overall yardage gains Right, so what I'm going to do in the video is uh, we're going to try the long drive shaft, but then we're going to put my normal shaft in, normal length shaft and weight and all the rest of the things. We're going to start off by using the, um, the long drive shaft. And I see, first of all, I'm just going to give you my opinion on what it feels like to have this kind of length of shaft in hand. And it's stating the obvious in many ways. You just move further away from the ball, and with that, there comes a little bit of uncertainty in terms of almost your sort of hand positioning. Um, you, you're doubting the kind of control straight away. It does feel, and I always say, it's just a couple of inches difference, but that seems to make a huge difference mentally before you go any further. So what I'm feeling, like I said, is that that club head seems a long way from where my hands are. And it's a bit abnormal. I'm not saying it's something you get used to, but it's a bit abnormal. Let's see if we can put a swing on. My hands almost seem to be, I've almost adopted Bryson's starting position here by picking my hands up a little, but it's the only way I feel sort of comfortable over the ball as well. That's really interesting. You've seen the shots out in the, um, on the outside there. In all honesty, it surprised me as to how not easy that's the wrong word but i've been able to use the shaft don't forget i chose a light option here because i tried something that was 50 grams stiff and seriously i couldn't get the club at anywhere near where it needs to be and all, everything dropped off nothing no gains whatsoever but what i have noticed i'm just looking back at the tv screen behind you is that straight away the obvious thing happens and that is club head speed increases just by the fact of the longer shaft but what does that mean in terms of ball speed and what does that mean in terms of dispersion? Right, so my question is to you is to how many of you are tempted to try this kind of route? Are we inspired by what we've seen by Bryson's, um, like I said, absolute mammoth drives? I mean, it's kind of, to me, it's never been the, what the game is all about, but I've got to admit that when you see him drive that ball, like I said, that 417 yard drive, it does add an element of excitement to it, but, um, is it kind of is that a separate challenge in terms of what golf is all about is that purely about long drive or can you combine the two and how much in reality does that mean to us average golfers are we able to follow in those footsteps and have a go and try and change our games to become all about driving it as long as we possibly can i must admit i'm i'm a bit surprised that some of the shots we've managed to hit in terms of control 
And that was another one of them. Do you know the thing that interests me is when I'm stood at a dress is that when I tried the uh, Cobra one length irons, everything threw me. So whether I was standing over a nine iron that seemed long in terms of shaft length, or whether I was holding a four iron that seemed short in terms of shaft length, it messed with my head and I just could never accept that. I, I would have struggled. And what's interesting with this, this 47 inch long driver shaft is that yes, I'm further away from the ball, but somehow it doesn't feel overly odd. And it's something that I feel that if this was regular in terms of what I, what I used every week, then I'm sure that I could get my head around this. And for somehow, this kind of works. Right, okay, so I will go through data and it pretty much is all about being data led this. Like I said, my normal driver shaft, pretty much done as standard. And maybe that's the position we'll start with. I'll throw you up some numbers. Um, 94 club head speed again. I range between 94 and probably 96, 97 at the top end in terms of probably shot number six, 97.4, shot number seven, 96.2. That's about as fast as I swing driver. Um, and if I'm doing that, as you've seen, 233 carry, 227 carry, spinning uh, 3-1 on average, ball speeds are 140. That's pretty much standard for me. Um, and I hit the ball reasonably well. Then we moved into the long drive shaft, and that's where you've got to look at the differences and uh, where it becomes interesting. I'm going to talk the averages first of all before we look into the detail of it. And the average was uh, an increase of six mile an hour in club head speed, which is significantly different, and again down to the length of the shaft. That produced five mile an hour more in terms of ball speeds. Spin dropped a little, but fairly similar. We got an extra 10 yards in terms of carry. Uh, launched a little bit lower, peak height a little bit lower, but no major differences in there really. I think that if you go through, I'll throw the full data now for the long drive shaft, they hit 11 shots in total. You've got a couple of shots in there. Um, we've got a 242 shot five, 242 shot eight. And again, around that 100 mile an hour club head speed, but that 150 um, ball speed is where those distance, distances are coming from. But then you've got things like shot number seven, which is 226 carry and a 104 club head speed, but clearly not hitting the middle of the club face, so only producing a ball speed of 144. So it's that, the, the, the tale of it is really, it's about consistency and whether or not you can find the middle of the club face swinging the longer driver shaft. If you do, then it can produce for the longer drives. It's that simple. How would I say significantly longer? I mean, 242 at the top end compared to my best driver, 233 top end with the regular shaft, it's 10 yard gains. It's a lot, I suppose, but for me, I'm going to throw out one last chart and it's the dispersion chart. This is the bit that surprised me a little bit. Red dots there on my regular driver. Again, pretty standard for me. I think they're fine in fairways. They're okay, maybe a few into the first cut or rough. And then the blue dots you see are that of the, lo uh, the long drive shaft. One leaked out away right, but a fairly tight grouping. And that was the bit that surprised me most of all is that I didn't really leak anything majorly out to the right hand side, which I was perhaps expecting to see. Um, the other point to note is that this was the last video we did of the day. I was very much warmed up by now. And I've said in earlier videos about using lighter shafts is if I got on the first tee and I've got a 47 inch long drive shaft in hand, not really warmed up because it's not something I do a great deal of, would I fancy my chances of finding a fairway? I, I'm not sure I would. Maybe if I was on the back nine and I'd loosened up and like I said, uh, start to hit a few decent drives, would I like the option to have that 46 inch shaft in and then? Yeah, maybe so, but that's not how golf works. So for me, it's quite simple really. At my club head speed, at my, the way I swing the club, I've not got the, um, the, the, the speed to generate the benefits from that long drive shaft. And it's just a, it's a no-go for me on a personal level, not for the 10 yard gains that are possible at the best shot that I've got in the bag. It just simply isn't worth it. But like I said, that's me on a personal level and it depends, I think very much this one on, uh, on your sort of the, the, the swing speed, your personal sort of strength of getting that club head through. Like I said, it's not easy. It requires a bit more effort 
and not one that I'm prepared to give to get an extra 10 yards out of my very best. So uh, an interesting one, like I said, more of an experiment than anything else, just to see what happens if you do get those extra couple of inches on the driver. And I suppose it did very much what we thought it would, except I didn't quite lose in terms of dispersion wise, quite as wide as what I thought I might have done. Anyway, as ever, thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you've, uh, if you've enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing to the channel, hit that like button, and uh, we'll see you again very soon. Lots of videos coming your way.